everyone know first of all everyone thank you for joining um yes. i have turned on my badges so if anyone wants to support this conversation i would love 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 that and as i was saying dolly i love um talking about african schools and what's going on in you know in all the various countries so i am very excited to hear about your um boarding experience in, in Kenya. So let's get started. Everyone, I am Dr. Lauren, and I am a special educator in the United States. I am not an adult with dyslexia, but I am very passionate about bringing awareness and knowledge and resources, hence these lives and conversations. So Dolly, do you mind introducing yourself for everyone who doesn't know you? Yes, of course. Hi, everybody. My name is Dolly. Um, I'm originally from Kenya, but I live in England and I have dyslexia. I've had dyslexia all my life, but I was diagnosed with dyslexia quite later on in life. So, um, yeah, but, but now I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now I love it. When you go to fill out a form and someone asks, is a bit, is a bit, off with you you just say I've got dyslexia then their whole demeanor changes so it's amazing I love I love being dyslexic I don't think I would be Dolly if I wasn't dyslexic I love that so we're gonna delve into some questions for the audience to kind of really understand what that means because I love that empowerment piece so as you said you are Kenyan but you're also in the UK yeah can that's you, correct yes can you talk a little bit about your experiences in the Kenyan boarding schools what was that experience like? Were the teachers supportive? Did they know how to support you? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's it's a shame to say that in the African community, dyslexia, especially I can speak, I can specifically speak from Kenya. I'm not too sure about other countries, but definitely Kenya. It's something that is not acknowledged. Right. You seem to be, a di when you have dyslexia or you have some sort of um, difficulties in education, you are deemed to be, um, how can I say, you're deemed to be, your work ethic It's deemed to be like, you don't work hard enough, you don't listen, you're not applying yourself. So right. when I did go to um, Kenya to a boarding school, only the fact is that I have a very strong personality but if you don't have a strong personality and you're able to speak up for yourself, it's something that can really kill one's confidence, especially in the African community. In the African community, most definitely, because um, education is something that is, is, has a lot of pressure. It's very we're very pressured um, to do well academically, and we all can't be academic. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, and I and I like how you touched on the African culture, because I know I've interviewed a colleague who is from Ghana, very similar. And also I've, I've picked up the culture with Nigerian culture. And it's just, it's very intense where it's like, I don't know about for you and how your parents were, but it's like doctors, lawyers, engineers, and that's not for everyone. And no, we, no, it's, I, yeah, go ahead. No, no, it's not. It's not for everyone. Well, I, I have to say, um, I'm very lucky. My mom's a therapist. She's a counselor. So her, her, her vision and her understanding in life is a lot more open. So even when I was at school, she was the one that when teachers will label me as being naughty, the naughty, the clown, she would always say, there's something that's just not right. Because at home, Dolly's very well behaved. So right. there's, some, there's something that's clearly that's not right. Because obviously, when it came to things like uh, reading out loud, I couldn't do so. So when it came to my turn, I would be a bit destructive. So my mum was always like, there's just something that's just not right. And obviously, because of the community she comes from, it, it, she wasn't aware of this. But she really pushed on it till um they gave me what i need gave me the support that i needed so if it wasn't from my mom i would have been deemed the class clown the destructive child right so, right and i always yeah. feel like there's always that like mama bear that's always just like nope i know my child can do this we're gonna get to the bottom of this 
And I loved how you also touched on the self-esteem piece because that's huge. And actually, I want to ask you, so can you share with the audience, how old were you when you were diagnosed and did you self-diagnose or did someone else see it? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, like I said, um, the school I went to wasn't very helpful. That was in England, wasn't very helpful. So my mum took me to a, um, a specialist, like an education specialist. And they were like, Dolly's very clever. She like, she's very, she's very clued onto things. She can express herself, but she finds it difficult to express herself on paper. So that's when I was diagnosed, but I was diagnosed quite later on. I was in secondary school then. Um, I don't know what to call it in America, but I was like in year eight. So I was like uh, 13, 14. So okay. all, all that time. I had this, I had dyslexia, but nobody ever picked up on it. I probably would have never, no one would have ever picked up on it unless my mum pushed and, you know, took me out of the system I was in and went, took me to a specialist. I would have never been diagnosed. With, so with how would you say, I've, I've spoken to many adults with dyslexia. How would you rank your dyslexia? Do you feel like it's, it's severe? Do you feel like it's moderate? Do you feel like it's not? Um, not I, as severe. Well, I I'm Can you still hear me? Sorry, apologies. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Um my dyslexia is I would say is I can cope. So I can okay. I'm, I'm comfortable to fill out a form. Um, I'm, com I'm comfortable to answer messages, to to send an email. So I can cope. But the only thing is with my dyslexia is, is um, really expressing myself on, right. or, on paper and also maneuvering with things like um, dates and times. I get very okay. confused with dates and times. So, uh, but I just, you just find methods that work, work for you really. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Like I know for me, I have ADHD, so I need timers and reminders for everything. <laughs> yeah. So that's super helpful. No, I really appreciate this conversation. I love this. And everyone who is joining in, thank you again so much for the support. And again, my badges are on. If you want to support the cause, the um, conversation, the awareness that we're bringing, please do. I love that. So, Dolly, I want to shift to your Instagram page. So on your bio... You yeah. have, you're the dyslexic queen. And I love that empowerment. And you started talking about how you love being dyslexic. So how do you see dyslexia as an advantage in how you navigate through the world? Um, well, I just feel like when you have dyslexia, you think different. And it's, you think you generally do think different. Because the amount of times I've gone to the wrong airport, gone to the airport a day early or a day late, you just think differently. And I think that... Um, the more I am comfortable with being dyslexic, the more that an outsider has no choice but to accept it. And especially on Instagram, you obviously get messages. And I could get a message from somebody at, or I could post something and spell something wrong. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself that I have to get it right because right. You know, I need to feel that I, you know, it's, a, it's okay for me if I misspell something, if I write something wrong. And then, and then you find a lot of people are more accepting when you accept it. So um, I've, I have found that the more I say I'm dyslexic, the more people are like, they don't know, they're like, what's that? Or right. they're, they're like, okay, clearly she, that's why her spelling sometimes is a bit, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I also feel like, too, when we talk about it, it it brings awareness. Like, from your perspective, you're an adult with dyslexia. So you can actually talk about that lived experience. And hopefully people have the compassion to say, oh, okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Someone from my vantage point, I'm an educator. So as I'm talking about it, I'm talking about how it impacts your you academically, confidence-wise. And I agree with you. Like, if you don't have a strong personality and if you – aren't going to put your foot down. And if you're not going to advocate for yourself, it can be a lifelong journey of just anxiety and depression if, if it's not, you know, caught at an early age. So I love when adults are, are embracing it because I feel like I've talked to many adults who are like, I hated this early on. You know, this really was like the bane of my existence, but now I realize it's me. I'm accepting it. 
you know? And so hearing you, you share that is so powerful for people to really hear and understand that. Yeah, and I also think, one thing I do, I really do think, um, I think people automatically assume that people are comfortable with writing and reading. So yes. you could go somewhere and someone could just hand you over a form and they expect you to be able to fill it out. And I think the more times we tell people, like, you know, I have an issue, it right. stops putting so much pressure on you and that person becomes a little bit more understanding maybe they can sit you through and uh help you fill out the form so i think it's something not to be ashamed of it's something not to be ashamed of it's something to wear with like a badge of honor because that it, it, it there's no limitations uh when you have dyslexia you know it's just um you're just it's, it's you're just different you know it's just a bit different but there's right. no yeah, because like uh, I enjoy reading. I've never enjoyed reading as a child, but now we have audiobooks. So I'm constantly listening to audiobooks. So there's always a way to maneuver with, uh, with dyslexia. So I think it's something that we should talk about a lot more and feel comfortable to say that we have dyslexia. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And I think you're right. There is this um, just societal understanding of like, Here's this application form. Here's, you know, this book. When really, when I'm in the classroom and I'm talking to parents and teachers, we talk about accommodations. And some some people prefer audiobooks. Some people prefer speech to text. I mean, I know for me, I like voice threads. I like voice notes. It's yeah. so much easier for me to just get my thoughts out because it's like us talking right now versus let me type this out. Now, I have no problems writing emails, but I prefer the voice threads. So yeah. as a society, it would be nice to say, here's this job application. What's the best way for you to fill this out? Rather than assume like, here you go, Dolly, here's this job application. And, you know, so I feel like there's so many different um, ways as a, as a society that we need to fix and change that. Output. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And I definitely think in the, um, I can obviously, I could, that's the only community I can speak about. I definitely think in the, in the black community, especially the African community, we need to become a little bit more tolerant with yes. the situation. Because no, um, I absolutely agree. Absolutely. Yeah, we need to become a, a, a lot more tolerant because that's why so many young people, they feel inadequate in so many ways. And they, and these things lead into like depression and yes. um, substance abuse. So I think it's really important for us to be a lot more tolerant and understand that we all can't be academic. You know, we right. All can't, yeah, we all can't be academic. <laughs> And I, and that's another reason why I'm always excited to interview people from countries that are typically either African or, or brown. You know, I, I interviewed a friend last summer who's from Oman, and I never thought of like dyslexia in Oman or yeah. someone in Egypt, you know, just some of places where it's like, how often are we really thinking about those countries? And so yeah. I was really excited to connect with you, even though I know you're in the UK, but you're Kenyan. So yeah, I just I I would love to hit every African country if I possibly could. Oh, yeah, yeah, you should, you should, you should, you should, you should, you should, because I can I can only imagine or empathize with a Kenyan child who's in a mainstream school who has dyslexia. They get no help. They're labeled. I can right. only imagine like what it does to their self-esteem and what it does to them as a person because you you, you know it's it, it it's like having I don't know it's like being blind and someone telling you you have to see there's nothing right. that they can they can specifically do to like get you know get better you know you can learn ways to maneuver but you can't ever one day it just disappears so I can only empathize with what a lot of um children especially in kenya who are in mainstream schools who are expected to to reach such high grades and they just it's just not it's just not in in them to be able to do it so it must lead into a lot of like self-doubt depression right. yeah it must be I, I can i can only imagine no absolutely so dolly i want to end with a with a positive note 
about you being a fashionista. So your page is all about like your amazing outfits, which I love. So, Thank you. Yes. So can you share maybe three ways that you, you feel like your dyslexia helps your passion? I mean, is there like a way that like your you're putting together your outfits. Do you actually create outfits? Like, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, well, I find with uh, being uh, in the fashion business, I find there's no right or wrong. Yes. So there is no right or wrong. It's a platform where I, being Dolly, I can 100% express myself. If I decide to wear yellow and green or blue and green, there's no right or wrong. The only thing in fashion is preference, but there's no right or wrong. So I am so much able to express myself as a person because some days I could feel like dressing very glamorous or some days I could feel very plain, but there is no right or wrong in fashion. And it doesn't matter from being a size zero to size 20. It does not matter when it comes to fashion. Fashion has that's one thing I love about fashion, especially expressing yourself in fashion. Fashion sees no color, no race, no shape. It's all about expressing yourself as a person. So um, I think I it's somewhere I feel very comfortable. I love that. And I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it, it ties into what you were talking about earlier with your dyslexia, where you just think differently. And yes. when I was looking at your page and just some of your awesome outfits, I do get that sense of what you were saying. You're right. Fashion doesn't have a right or wrong. And you can feel one way and that's how you feel and that's how you express yourself. And I always look at art and fashion and all of that as a way of expression. So I always think that that's just amazing that people can feel comfortable in whatever it is they're wearing and and rock it, you know? So I just think that, that that's so positive. And I love that. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it is, it is, it is. I love, I love fashion. Fashion's like, uh, like you said, like art or having your own allotment. There's no way, right way or wrong. If you want to start growing tomatoes first, or if you want to have cabbage, there's no right or wrong. It's yours. It's your. It's it's your canvas, and you paint it however right. way you want. However way you want to paint it, it's yours. I love that. Yeah. Well, Dolly, thank you so much for your time. I hope everyone enjoyed this conversation, and obviously, this will be on my page for later views. And um, yes, thank you so much for sharing your experience, your dyslexic experience in the, in the Kenyan schools and all of that. So have a great afternoon. I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to say before we end the conversation. No, uh, no I just wanted just to say that we should just be a lot more tolerant and uh, hopefully this can reach our 52 African countries and we can become yes. much, more, much more aware and be much more um, kinder to the people who are not as academic as everybody else. I would agree. I would absolutely agree. And Dolly, if you know anyone in any of the other African countries, send them my way. I want to- Oh, well, most definitely, most, <laughs> most definitely. But thank you so much for your time and have a great day. You and, too. Uh, hey, bye, bye. Bye, Dolly.